I've been meaning to make this video for a while because I've been really into the lion's mane for, for a while now and I've had some really really good results from using it mentally and physically. I've noticed real improvements in these areas and I've been mainly using the concentrated powdered extract of the fruiting body and I've been using the powdered mycelium as well. Now I haven't actually encountered it out in the wild in the forest here yet but I do have uh, some plug spawn so I'm going to inoculate some logs as soon as the sub-zero temperatures you know are behind us and we go into spring so definitely going to be cultivating it pretty soon. So lion's mane is categorized as a teethed fungus and it really grows all over the place. It grows in Europe, uh, throughout the US, grows in Japan and China as well. It actually grows in you know a few other different countries and it's what's known as a saprophyte which basically means that its ecological role is to rapidly decompose dead or dying organic matter which in this case would be trees and it just returns them as quickly as possible to the soil in the form of a really rich humus which is going to really feed and benefit the soil ecology. Now as you can see from the picture it has this kind of waterfall effect of these downward pointing spines and the fruiting body itself can quite often grow to I think almost about half a meter in diameter. Now it is generally white or slightly off-white but it does become yellow or you know even a bit light brown as it ages. Uh, now lion's mane really proliferates in the warmer months generally speaking uh, so long as there's you know sufficient moisture in the atmosphere um, and you, you know you've got to be careful when harvesting because they do tend to uh, bruise really really easily so you know being not manhandling it too much and just you know being a bit gentle and you know with a bit of care is, is really important. So like most other medicinal mushrooms lion's mane does have a lot of these complex polysaccharides that offer a lot of immune enhancement and also anti-cancer and anti-tumor properties that uh, in this case apply specifically to the liver and to the digestive tract and the stomach in particular uh, but it also has more of a generic anti-tumor action that it you know delivers to most parts of the body now these kind of actions are, are pretty standard with most medicinal mushrooms but lion's mane is actually unique because it does contain uh, compounds called irinocenes which um, activate nerve growth stimulant factor within the body so this actually initiates the, the regeneration of the nervous system. It actually stimulates uh, damaged like neurons that have been damaged and have suffered some trauma. It's actually going to stimulate these to repair and regrow and regenerate. And it also does the same thing with the myelin sheath, which is that, that kind of insulative coating that surrounds all of the nerves in the body. So uh, this is actually an area that I've experienced some real benefit from using lion's mane because a number of years ago I did really severely badly injure my right ankle and I've had a number of operations on it, something that I've been dealing with for a long time and the surgeon that was operating on me at the time told me that the nerve damage I'd received to the, the rear of my ankle was going to be permanent and you know I'd be suffering you know lifelong pain uh, from that injury but I mean I've done a few different things a number of different strategies over time which is probably something I'll cover in a future video but lion's mane has been one of those things that I've used and I've used it in isolation from other other substances that kind of stimulate nerves to regrow and I can definitely say that I've I've experienced some real benefit from using it so aside from the injury healing potential and the ability to reverse neurological trauma, lion's mane's actually been very intimately and closely tied in to really benefiting people that are suffering from Parkinson's disease or Alzheimer's. And it also offers a lot of um, just general cognitive improvements for people, uh, as well as you know physical and mental coordination and it can really improve the, the transmission 
of neurotransmitters and really repair a lot of neurons that are actually in the brain itself because all of the polysaccharides and the arenosines that are in lion's mane can actually cross the blood-brain barrier with no problem at all. Lion's mane is actually really quite high up the fungal hierarchy, so in the wild it's uh, really able to eliminate competing fungi from its surrounding environment. And this is a, a kind of talent that it has that it maintains when we ingest it, so it's actually very useful in supporting us dealing with and treating you know, a number of different fungal infections and it's really quite potent against candida as well. And all of these benefits that I'm talking about from the research that's been done, it looks like they're very easy to gain access to because you can pretty much get all of these benefits from just eating it or cooking with it and also from hot water extracts uh, as in a lot of the research as well. So you could dry it and decoct it and make a tea with it or you could put it into like soups for a slow cook or that kind of thing. So lion's mane really is an incredible mushroom with a lot of powerful properties and it, you know for a very very long time it's been considered a real gourmet delicacy because it's really got this um, this flavor that strongly resembles seafood or more specifically shellfish and you know in China for for a very very long time it's been so highly prized that it used to be reserved exclusively for royalty, you know, and, and common peasants were not permitted to eat it or use it in any way. So it's really, really an amazing species, but as always, it, it really has so much more to offer this world, you know. It's like I mentioned earlier, it has, um, it is a very critically important component within the ecosystem, you know, it's an incredibly powerful decomposer of wood and it has a very voracious appetite to do that so it's a very important piece of the ecological puzzle within the forest ecosystem and uh, it's it's a, a key element in maintaining biodiversity and uh, really the health and immunity and the adaptability of that ecosystem so you know this is very important and if you're wild harvesting it you really need to remember that your needs are really quite small compared to the overall needs of the forest. So it's really important to take only what you need. And I think this is a rule that should apply to anything that you're removing from a wild ecosystem.